and welcome to Garsington's Opera's Design Challenge, Fantastic Medals. This week we're going to be joined by designer Ruth Payton, which is really great, and we are taking Tchaikovsky's Eugene Onegin as inspiration, and that is set in early 19th century Russia, and this is a picture to give you a mood of that really, really beautiful and we are all going to be invited to a ball which is a wonderful scene in the, in the story in the opera and women would have taken a fan to a ball with them and this really shows you what that scene might have looked like with the chandelier and then the next image with a fan you can see so it got really really hot in these places there was obviously no air conditioning so Ruth do you think you might be able to help us uh, get a fan for this occasion so everyone can bring those to our session on Monday? Absolutely. I was really looking forward to making some props with you all today. And so, yes, we're going to make some fans. We're going to make them out of things you've got at home, some tissue paper or crepe paper. And um, here are the materials that you're going to need for the fans. Um, we're also going to make some medals because the men wouldn't probably take a fan to the ball, but they would wear their own ornaments, epaulettes, gold rope and medals. So the materials for the medal are thin card, a cereal box or old cards, a circle to draw around, maybe a roll of tape, some plasticine or glue tack, kitchen foil, print stick or white glue or PVA glue, a black marker pen, some ribbon and a safety pin. And for the fan, you're going to need some drinking straws or lollipop sticks, or if you don't have either of those, some wooden kebab skewers will do. A drawing pin, a paper clip, tissue or crepe paper, some tape, Cellar tape or washi tape would be perfect, and some paints, and finally, ribbon or wool. And here you can see on your screen, there is a picture of how a man might dress to go to a ball, and he's got these epaulettes on his shoulder, some medals on his chest, and, um, and this is a production shot from Onyegin at Garsington, and you can see again the ornamentation on that, on that man's costume. Finally, you can see a medal here, which has actually got the date there, 1820. And so I used that for inspiration for the medal that we're going to make today. This one has got an R on, because uh, that's my initial, but I've copied the branches here. I think it's probably Laurel. And I'm gonna show you how to make that this morning. Um, we're gonna start by making the model actually, so I'm gonna clear away these fans. We'll have a look at those later on. Now, because we're making two props, I'm going to whistle through what we're going to have to do. So sorry if it's a bit quick, but I'm sure you'll be able to take a lot longer over it at home. To make this model, this medal, we're going to have to cut a circle. Now, I've made quite a large medal, and um, I think that's a good idea so that you can really get the relief and the detail on there. I drew around a roll of tape. To get my circle and I did it on an old Christmas card so I'm going to do that quickly here in front of you and then cut that out with scissors and I've started cutting one out here I'm just going to finish it off like that and so when you have your circle cut out that's the base for your metal we need to make this relief picture and we're going to do that out of plasticine so here's some plasticine i'm sure you've all done this before but we need to roll out some sausages of plasticine to make an, a rim around the metal so here's one i'm just going to show you how to do the first one and then you can get on with it yourselves um, it's a bit fiddly to do this but once you've got the hang of it then it becomes easy. You fix that on all the way around the outside of the card. And the important thing is, is that you really squish it onto the card so that it becomes fixed on there. When we apply the foil later on, you don't want your picture to move around. And you carry that on all the way around the shape. The next thing is the initial, an R in my case. 
So another long sausage of plasticine, and you can shape any letter you choose. Maybe you're gonna make this for someone else and give it to them. Because it's the 19th century and things tended to be a little bit twiddly, I'm going to roll up the bottom of my arc to make a twiddly bottom there. And that's going to go onto the card. So the next stage would look like this. You can see I've started adding this branch of laurel and I'm going to show you how I did that to make the other one. So another sausage of plasticine and I'm going to stick that down there and then add these leaves. I've got about, I think there's eight leaves on each stem, but you can make up your own design. You could do something completely different um, if you wanted or you could use this as inspiration. Um, once I've stuck those down, I've got a few dots which to my mind represent blossom. And actually with a pencil, I'm just going to mark the center of each leaf for a bit of extra detail. There we are, and that is my plasticine relief picture finished. So we've got to add the foil to make it look silver. And um, I'm going to take this one because I've really fixed this one, took time fixing that one down well. A square of normal kitchen foil that covers your circle completely, Pritt stick or white PVA glue. And you smear that one. If you're using white glue, you don't need to use that much, just a thin layer all over. And that makes sure that it will stick down really firmly. Then this is the fun bit. You just put that down on top and work from the middle outwards and just start pressing down the foil over your picture. And then when you begin, it will look a little bit crumpled, but you work into it and the relief will start coming out. There we are, going around the leaves now. Now, this bit is a little bit time consuming because to get the best effects, you have to start really rubbing the foil so that you can see the picture that you've made underneath. And because I'm doing this on camera, I'm not doing it as well as you will do it at home. But you, I hope you can see that that shape is beginning to come through now. Now, all of this excess, we're just gonna fold back all the way around. I'm gonna press that down on the back. Yeah, so you can spend a bit more time making that relief really shine out by rubbing it all over. If you'd like to age your metal, like this one is, then you take some, take a black marker pen and actually just draw inside the relief. But you don't leave it like that. Take a bit of tissue, just rub off the excess marker pen on there and you end up with something that looks old and aged. Now, we've, oh, we've almost finished, we just need to attach a ribbon. So if we turn that over, and here's a little bit of ribbon. Now we are gonna use a safety pin, so do ask an adult before you can take one. And I'm gonna make sure I've got that the right way up, and then add a little bit of tape there. And there's our medal. Wow, that's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice. And I like the fact that it's larger than it would actually be because on stage, we as an audience would see it better because of that scale. So get designing those, get making them, send them to us. Don't forget to tag at Garsington Opera and use the hashtag GO Monday Motivation. Really excited about going to this ball on Monday and especially excited because I'm imagining this unbelievable 
display of the most amazing foods. <laughs> like sugared almonds and blini with delicious bits of fish on top, something like that. The, the sugared almonds are what is definitely appealing to me right now. I haven't had those for a while, so yeah, definitely. So if we were, um, you, you talked about um, the fans as well. So are we able to design the fans now so that we're all kitted out? So um, here's the fan that we're going to be making today. And I've tried to make these fans from things that you'll have at home. So this fan actually uses paper drinking straws for the bones of the fan. And this is crepe paper, but you could also use tissue paper would be absolutely fine. Or actually any wrapping paper if you don't have either a tissue or crepe. So let's get started. These bones that I was talking about, you're going to need between eight and 12 bones. These are drinking straws. You could use uh, lollipop sticks. And if you don't have either of those things, you could use barbecue skewers, but, but I'm gonna show you how to make them out of paper straws because that's the easiest way, really. You take a paper straw and you have to squeeze it down to make it flat. And you do that for all the six or 12 or eight or however many you're using so that you have flattened straws. Once they're flat, take a drawing pin and a little ball of plasticine or blue tack this is a trick I learned from Blue Peter, because we've got to make a hole at the bottom of this straw. So we're going to press down with our drawing pin onto the plasticine to make a hole. And we're going to do that in every single one of them, making the hole in roughly the same place. And once you've done that, I've got three here I made before, all with a hole at the bottom. I'm going to thread those onto a drawing, a uh, paper clip. But we need to open up this paper clip and then just thread the drinking straws on. There we are, that's three. But of course, you're going to put all of yours on. I'm working with 12. And so if you put 12 of these onto a paper clip, it looks a bit like this. There we are. So once they're on, you can see that they can easily fan out like that and gives you an idea of, of how this is going to work. So I'm just going to clear my desk and show you how to get the paper on there. Um, so this is a roll of crepe paper. You could use tissue paper or you could use any other softish paper would work, and then spread out these bones in a semicircle shape. Now you could measure them, but you don't need to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it by eye and make sure that they're all roughly the same space in between. And then with a pencil, I'm going to draw around them. Yeah. And once I've done that, I'm going to cut that shape out. And I've cut one out here. There. Now, we need to cut out another semicircle at the bottom. In case you don't have a compass, you could just use a roll of tape as your guide, draw around that, and cut that shape out. And then you'll end up with something that looks like this. And that is ready to stick the bones of the fan onto. So let's lay them out and see how it looks. At this point, it's really important that the bones of the fan are laid out in order, that none are overlapping each other in the wrong place. There we are. Oh, I forgot to show you. You've actually got to, um, twist these two ends of the paper clip a little bit like that. But once you've done that, you can lay it out. There we are. So that one's in the wrong place. I'm just moving that into the right place, checking them all over. There we go. 
And then you can start taping those down when you're happy with that position. I'm using magic tape, but I used washi tape on my lollipop stick fan and that worked really nicely. So if you have washi tape at home, do use that, that would be fab. Uh, but normal cellar tape also does the trick. And I'm going to lay the tape all the way along the straw and stick it to the paper underneath. And I'm going to do that all the way around, making sure they're all fixed down in order. And if you do that carefully, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And you can see that really is beginning to look like a fan now. Now, to make the fan fold up, we're just going to collect together all the straws so that they sit on top of each other. And to do that, each time you fold, the paper is going to have to fold. And you're going to gather it together so the folds are more or less in the same place. It's a little bit fiddly. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it goes wrong. But there we go. Squeeze that down so that the folds are in the right place. And then we should be able to, oops, that one's got stuck. Should be able to open that out. And that's ready to start the painting. That one just, there was one that got stuck in the wrong place. There we are. So I'm going to paint on this side. You can see from the other ones I've done that I've used, this one I was inspired by the blossom outside in my garden. There's a lot of crab apple blossom, but it's just dots of paint. And then this one is um, more linear. That's the bright blue of the sky. And this one, just some lines are radiating out from the center. But you can do whatever you like. Everything works quite well even if you just wrote your name on it. But I'll show you very quickly. I'm using watercolour. If you're using another kind of paint, just make sure you have a lot of water on there. And here we go. I'm just gonna do the blossom version because it's really quick and easy. I'm just using one colour, but you could experiment and use lots of different colours. And while you're painting that reef, just a reminder to everyone, obviously if you don't have straws, there are alternatives there. And they were lolly sticks and kebab sticks, I think you said, didn't you? Oh, that's right. But let me quickly show you. If you use kebab sticks, you're going to have to add a little bit of tape at the bottom and get that close up to the camera. Um, oh, yeah. You see there's a square of tape there and the wire, the paper clip is going to go through the paper so that you don't have to go through this thin skewer. Great. And obviously if... I mean, you can improvise with what you use for that. You might, be, you might have lots of chopsticks in your house or whatever else that you've got to hand. So you can either make a fan or a medal, or if you're feeling really creative and energised, you could make both. Do send us what you've created. Remember to use the, um, remember to tag Garsington Opera and use the hashtag Geo Monday Motivation. It's been really great working with you this morning, Ruth. And look at that final, blossomed beautiful design on there in that fan and we will see you for monday motivation at 10 a.m and we shall go to the ball bye yes, <laughs>